Okay, so now that we've mixed this product, and it's important to remember if I only want half of that product, I can't just tip half of this and go, oh yeah, that's about right. What you probably need to do is, we can use a measuring or scale stick that gives us increments in base, catalyst, and or thinners if we need it. In this case, because we use an airless pump, we do not need to put solvent in this, primarily because the pump has a capacity to be able to pump that material through. Pretty good statement, isn't it? We don't need solvent in this to pump that through there. That's a fact. However, because it's acrylic polyurethane, it needs a little bit of solvent to help it with film formation. So when I say this pump can pump that, no worries at all, happy days. What you've got to remember is the characteristics of the product, and exactly what I talked about before. You have to understand the characteristics of the product to, be, to enable a good film or finish at the, the end of the job. So because this is a, a polyurethane, I've added a little bit of solvent, which I've added 5%, which is more than enough, 5% to help with film formation. And also too, what that does is it makes it shinier because it's a top coat. So with most polyurethanes, I'll probably need to add a little bit of solvent. So by that increment of solvent, what does that do to the outcome? Primarily, what it does is changes again, tip selection. Now that I've reduced the viscosity of the product, I can come down and tip size again. So the reduction in tip size gives me a smaller atomization, so it's finer. And if most top coats, are, their raw materials are finely ground, so therefore we can use finer tips, finer filters to accommodate that particular top coat. So remember what I said, if you only want half the tin, if you can measure, you can, you can measure the tin with a, a rule and measure this with a rule and work out your ratio to this. This particular one is six to one. So I just make sure that if I do use sections of this tin instead of the full amount, I must use a scale ruler to ensure that I get the appropriate catalyst in the correct amount of base. As I said, it's important when you're doing this to wear a mask. Of course, common sense prevails. I can't possibly wear a mask and talk to you at the same time. So this is what we call a radiator brush. The history of this is actually quite interesting. This radiator brush is this shape primarily because years ago in England, they used to have uh, wood -filled, uh, water filled heaters and the fins on them were very close. So even as an apprentice, you would, uh, I would utilize this particular brush to paint in between the fins. That's why it's at 45 degrees. But for this application, the best part about it is that it gives me the chance to plunge it into the solvent to wash up this particular agitator to keep it clean. Now, as I said, if you keep this clean, so what I do is I'll keep some spare solvent to one side and make sure that this is washed each time I use it. So when I want to use or mix some more material, I've got a nice clean agitator with no remnants of skinning, no remnants of semi-cured material, because as I mentioned previously, if I put that mixer in a new tin of product and it's got remnants of blue paint on it or remnants of the color or the product that I'm using, it will soften what's on the mixer, on the agitator, and consequently end up with contaminants in the paint, which can actually start the cross-linking or, or the curing aspect of it quite significantly, and ultimately it affects it through the pump as well, and we end up with blocks. So now that I've mixed this material, it's good to go. I've put some solvent in there to help with film formation. The pump's good, we've made sure that it primed. So that means we've got solvent in this line, and we have solvent in this suction line. So ultimately what I need to do is, again, prime this pump to remove the solvent in there so I don't contaminate the top coat that I'm about to apply, on, apply to the wall. So as I mentioned before, we wear gloves. Now there's two types of, three types of gloves you can use. You can use the rubber coated gloves I had on previously, which is these ones, rubber coated on the bottom side. You can use the solvent resistant gloves. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with a pair of old washing up gloves. Why would I say that? Because these particular gloves will resist a small amount of solvent, but more importantly, with these gloves, I can feel the gun when I'm, when I'm depressing the trigger, and it gives me, appropriates the, uh, the opportunity to be able to feel how tight I'm putting the tip housing on, and also too, I can feel the safety 
through that glove a lot better than what I can with a big glove like this. It's entirely up to the individual, but remember what I said, doesn't matter what type of glove you use, once this is pressurised, it can impregnate that glove and of course inject you as well. So, put my gloves on, keep myself nice and clean. Helps if you've got smaller hands. So now what I can do is prime this pump to ensure that I get all the solvent out and not contaminate the top coat. And all the while making sure that I'm safe and the environment that I'm working on is clear and clean. So remember what I said, throat seal oil goes in the top of the pump, make sure it's there. Now, as I mentioned previously, I do not wish to apply pressure in an open drum. So what I have here is a 20 litre drum with the top out, with the top off it. Now I can release all the solvent in there and pump it out the top. So with this open, the air valve open on the pump itself. Now I'm going to regulate what this pump does with the regulator at the back, which is the T-shaped section of the top of the regulator. Now I can watch it here until paint comes out. You can see this tin is going down. There's the paint. Now I can shut that valve. More than enough. That's the appropriate way to do it. Now what I have is not much pressure in here and without too much pressure, so I won't turn that regulator up yet until I have paint coming out here. So remember what I said, keep your hands clear and clean, utilise the safety, put the, t the gun over the hole if you wish to, by all means. Put a piece of rag around there, safety off, depress the trigger. So what I can do is, this enables me to watch the end of the gun from a safe distance with safety glasses on to watch the material being exhausted from the end of the gun. Now, what I've done is, I've just flushed the solvent out of the lines. So I've kept the solvent now for my next primary flush when I finish painting. But also too, what I need to do is make sure that I just recirculate this product slightly more to make sure that what's in the tin is exactly the same as what's in the gun. So in this instance what I'll do is, as I said, without too much pressure on the regulator, appropriate a piece of rag over the top, safety off, put the gun under the rag. So if I had too much pressure on that regulator, there would be rebound and of constant and the consequence would be paint all over me. So the safety's on, wiping the gun clean, make sure it's all nice and clean. What you don't want is paint in this thread here because the paint will cure and I can't get the tip base on and off. So cleanliness is the ultimate in this particular game. So the safety's still on as you can see. Ensure that it's nice and clean. Now that I know it's nice and clean, I'll grab the tip base and tip to ensure that we've put everything in place to spray. So remember what I said about the tip. I need to select the appropriate tip for this type of application. I'll get a guide for that from the data sheet. The half moon washer is in place. The tip is in place and it's on spray at the moment. So just to keep yourself safe, put it on a half and half. So that means half and half is, it can't spray out the front and the back of the tip is closed as well. 